Continuing on with the uh, maintenance of this um, F-250 that I recently purchased and just going through all the various systems to uh, renew uh, those parts that uh, are known to commonly fail, <coughs> I'm going to focus on the alternator today and um, I'm going to try to see if I can replace the brushes in this alternator. Um, just like on the uh, Mercedes and BMWs, the Mercedes that I have, the 420 SEL, that car has a removable integrated uh, regulator and brush holder. And as you can see, the brushes were very worn. Almost That was almost going to leave you on the side of the road. Well, Ford does the same thing with their alternators. You can buy brush kits. Actually, you don't even have to get the whole regulator module like a Mercedes. You can just get the brushes for about $9. And... Um, that goes in to this regulator module right back there. This is the uh, 3G alternator, the small form factor. You can tell by the uh, four holes here instead of two. It's a 95 amp. And it's the original alternator with the car. And um, I like to keep the original alternator if I can, because once you start getting replacement parts, you don't really know the quality of them. You don't know how they were rebuilt. And you might continue to have problems with them on down the road, so it's always a better idea to try to keep the original parts if you can. And uh, the alternator is also fairly expensive, and it's better to just uh, go ahead and replace those parts that tend to wear out the most while you have the truck here where you can work on it in a controlled fashion versus having the alternator fail on the road and uh, leave you stranded. So uh, there's not much to go wrong with these things. You can have a bad regulator, or you can have um, bad front and rear bearings, which they'll let you know they're going bad well ahead of time before it leaves you on the side of the road. You can hear the noises it makes. You can also have bad rectifiers and also a bad stator. You can see some of the wiring in here that makes up the stator. But generally, the stator and diodes, they really don't go bad. It's pretty much the, uh, the brushes, because that's basically a wear item, a consumable item. And to a lesser degree, the front and rear bearings. And uh, this thing is 17 years old, has 150,000 miles on it. I don't know what shade the brushes are in, but for $9, I'm going to go ahead and uh, swap them out. That'll make the uh, brushes in this alternator like new. And... Um, hopefully last a long time. So uh, one of the first things we have to do is um, bust these bolts loose. It's got a, a bolt here, a bolt down there which I already took out, and then a bolt right there under that wire harness that I took out. So basically two bolts here, one bolt there. And the bolt there was uh, slightly cross-threaded at the factory unfortunately. So um, that came out very very stubbornly and um, there was actually a piece of aluminum material from the uh, threads left in here. And if that happens to you, you could just go ahead and take yourself a tap and die set, put a die in here, and then run this through the threads and clean up those threads real good. And before I go back in, I'm going to put some anti-seas on these because these are dissimilar materials, steel going into aluminum which tends to set up a corrosion process, so just in case I have to take that alternator out in the future to replace the front and rear bearings, it's not going to be quite as difficult to get these bolts out again. And uh, one, the other thing we have to do is um, get the serpentine belt off. And if you forget how it's put on, you can look at the uh, diagram here on the radiator support. Most cars have them here. It tells you exactly how to put them back on. And by the way, this is the uh, part number that I have for the uh, brushes, in case you guys want to do this on your own Fords. And um, this also, doesn't, it doesn't only work for the uh, small form factor alternators, it works for all the Ford alternators of this size. It's basically the uh, same brush kit, even all the way up to the 130 amp alternators you see on the uh, Power Stroke diesels. You can actually tell, you could put that alternator in this truck because you have some space here between that alternator and the bracket, but no need to do that with this truck. 95 amps is plenty. This thing's running really good. And um, to get the belt off, what you do is you've got a tensioner here with a bolt on the end of it, 
and you can take a big breaker bar and what you do is you just move it this way and you release the tension it's going to take two hands so I can't get the belt off holding the camera but you guys get the idea once the tensions released you can go ahead and uh, work the belt off so uh, let me do that and um, pick up from there so uh, here's your serpentine belt that was fairly easy to get off and it's got some uh, significant cracking they make tools actually that fit in these ribs to tell you how worn the belt is but these belts aren't very expensive I'm gonna go ahead and uh, replace this belt when I uh, change the coolant but this belt basically just needs to be replaced it's got way too many cracks in there it may be the original belt so um, I'll go ahead and reuse that for another couple hundred miles anyway stick that up there and um, another thing you can do now that you have the belt off of here is um, kind of test these bearings you want to go on each one of these accessory pulleys except for the crankshaft that's going to be too hard to turn and just give these things a spin kind of see how long it takes to slow down that kind of gives you a clue as to what kind of shape the bearings are in this one took a long time to slow down and it's uh, very very quiet and you want to feel for the uh, end play shaking it up and down and kind of move it in and out and I can't move it very much at all so I know the bearings in this alternator are good without even taking it apart and you want to move on to the next pulley the uh, idler pulley and um, that's got some significant wear on there this is just plastic and see how this sounds and those bearings in there sound extremely dry although there's not really a whole lot of play in here so from that perspective they're in good shape but that's probably what's making my chirping sound in the morning when I start it up when it's cold I can actually feel the individual ball bearings rolling around in here so I might go ahead and uh, replace this bearing when I do the cooling system so this will going through this will help me determine um, what components I need to buy in addition to the hoses and maybe the radiator so I can go ahead and uh, replace everything all at once and uh, this is the actual tensioner pulley it's metal and we'll move that back and forth it's uh, feeling really good and I can spin it and not hear any noise so that part is probably good for continued service no reason to replace that and then down here is your uh, air pump for the uh, small control system you can kind of hear a little bit of play in there a little noisy so I'll keep my eye on that just to uh, be forewarned that uh, that part may be the part that gets replaced next but it's really not making any noise there's no reason to worry about it this is the uh, air conditioning compressor what happens is, is the engine's always turning this pulley and when you turn the AC on electromagnets move that in against the pulley this is the actual compressor crankshaft I'm turning right here and actually that compressor actually it's a little bit too hard to turn for me for my taste I may go ahead and put a a freon charge in it and maybe put a few ounces of oil in there this has a little bit of play in it but not too much to be terribly concerned about sounds quiet so I'm not going to worry about that at the moment here's your power steering pump I just did this yesterday and that's got quite a bit of 
lateral play in there, you can see. These are always a little bit hard to turn, so you can't really spin them around, but it actually feels pretty good. But I don't like that uh, play right there. I don't know that that's normal. I just flushed the fluid out yesterday, so and I put a, a filter on there. I don't know if you can see it. So hopefully it won't get any worse than that, but that bear is watching. And then uh, finally, here's the water pump. And that's hard to spin too, because it's got this big fan attached to it. But uh, actually, that spins fairly nicely. I'm going to grab onto one of these fan blades and try to move it around. And I can't. So those water pump bearings are in good shape, which is really amazing because that's the uh, original 1994 Ford water pump on this thing. That's kind of really amazing. So now I know, just by taking the belt off, what kind of future repairs I may have to make. This uh, wear on the power steering pulley may not get any worse. It may stay like that for years, which would be okay. It doesn't make a lot of noise, and the truck drives fine. And then we have the uh, pulley on the small pump down there, which um, probably will last me several more years. But um, this guy here definitely needs to be replaced. So next, I'm going to, uh, so I'll go ahead and order that when I get the parts for the uh, cooling system. And uh, now I'm going to go ahead and uh, take off this last bolt for the alternator and kind of move the alternator forward. I don't really have to take it out of the car. And then I'll be able to access the back end of it here with the regulator and pull that out. And you'll guys see that next. Okay, here's the uh, alternator in a better position, and this is your voltage regulator. And what I have to do is undo these four Torx screws and slide it out. I've already got the uh, connector off. And then the brushes are held in with these two screws here, but you got to get the regulator out first. So I'll uh, go ahead and do that next. Okay, that wasn't too bad. The regulator is out, and you can see the two slip rings right there. The uh, one on the bottom here looks a little grooved, which is actually kind of normal. They should be perfectly flat and smooth, but um, they're good for continued use. Those are the two slip rings. They, they um, are the, basically the contacts for the rotor. The rotor is just a big coil of wire. It's an electromagnet, and those two slip rings carry current from the battery to basically quote-unquote excite, or apply current to the uh, rotor there, the claw pole rotor, and generate your voltage. And um, now we have the uh, brush assembly and regulator, and um, it doesn't look too bad. I've seen worse than that. The ones in the Mercedes were worse than that. But definitely time to replace them. And uh, just for comparison, this is the new brushes. And you can see, I can put them on one on top of the other. You can see just how worn they really are. So uh, definitely time to go ahead and replace them. This uh, brush assembly comes off with. Um, these two torque bits, you've got to un just basically get your nail under here and pry that up. Take out the torx bits. And then uh, swap out the brushes. They have this hole in here because there's a pin that I took out that keeps these brushes retracted so you can go ahead and get them into the alternator. So I'll go ahead and put that together and show you what it looks like. Okay, here's what the... Uh, new brush assembly looks like. I've got the uh, brushes all retracted so it'll be easy to put into the alternator and um, they've actually made a provision Ford did 
for assembly in this fashion. That's where the little pin is. And uh, once this is mounted in the alternator, I'll just go ahead and pull that pin out and the brushes will uh, slam against those slip rings and start making contact and uh, we'll be ready to test. So uh, this thing's all ready to put back in. And then I'll show you guys a quick and dirty way to test this thing. And I've got the old rig brush set back in the bag and I'll put it back in the uh, box and I can keep this as a spare. Okay, now that the uh, regulator is all installed and the new brushes are installed, um, here's a quick way you can test. When you turn the key to the run position, the alternator basically is uh, set to full charge before the engine starts up. And if the brushes are making good contact with the uh, slip rings, the alternator should be a little bit harder to turn. So you can't really uh, see how hard it is to turn with the video, but you can see how long it stays spinning when I turn it. So that's with uh, the ignition in the off position. Turns for a long time. And uh, now we'll uh, run in here and uh, turn it to full on. So now we should have uh, battery voltage going to the uh, rotor. And that is hard to turn. And it does not spin as long as it used to. It's under load right now, trying to charge the battery. So I know that the regulator is functioning fine and that the brushers are making good contact with the slip rings. So I know that when I put the belt back on and start it up, I'm gonna have a uh, perfectly functioning charging system. But that's a quick test you guys can do if you think you've got charging problems if your battery light comes on. Just take your belt off and see how hard that alternator is to turn. If it sits there in free wheels like it was before, you've either got worn brushes or you've got a bad voltage regulator. If it uh, is hard to turn like this, and it's still not putting out any voltage, you know, 14.2 volts across the battery, then you've got a more serious problem. You've got uh, probably burned out diodes inside the rectifier assembly, and if not, probably a, an opening or a short in the stator. That's usually pretty rare. Anyway, I'm going to um, go ahead and uh, put on that old serpentine belt. I'm going to order a replacement idler pulley, or hopefully just a bearing. <laughs> and then uh, the next thing I'll be doing is uh, changing all these coolant hoses and doing a complete cooling system flush. But this is a a real easy and cheap way to uh, make sure that you can keep the original alternator and not have any breakdowns on the road and save quite a bit of money. I think these are around 150 to over $200 if you wanted to get a whole new alternator and um, you don't really have to most of the time. It's just uh, cheap brushes that wear down over time. About $9 instead of 150 or 200 That's a much better deal.